Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, Representative Kirk, who I believe is Republican from up in the north, uh, being a Republican candidate. And he is, uh, you know, he's sort of squeaked in there a couple of times uh, and uh, against the tide of Obamaism in our state. Uh, I just wanted to know what your take is on him and the, the state. Of, let's just say, what's the state of the Republican Party in Illinois? And, you know, while the media may be uh, promoting, oh, this would be a good fight and this certain person would have a chance, uh, I, li I think it'll probably be the Democrats who uh, win the governorship again, win the senator's seat. But what is your take on the Republican Party? I think that... Um because you probably work with some of these guys. I work and with girls. a lot of them, and uh, there's some fine people that are Republicans. I think that um, one of the challenges that they all face is that they have the conservative right wing of the Republican Party that often prevents moderates. Um, you know, Beth Colson is a colleague of mine that I work closely with uh, from uh, Glenview, and um, her and I work on a lot of issues. But what's happened in recent years is that. Many of the House Republicans are more conservative, and I think what that does is it um, you don't get moderate Republicans. I don't mind that because, quite frankly, Illinois is a moderate state, and as long as they start running, uh, you know, right-wing Republicans, you know, we're going to win elections. But I think, quite frankly, the challenges are with um, the Democrats and all of us to work through our budget crisis, work through some ethical reforms that we need to put in place. And when those things happen and we begin to gain the trust back of the Illinois uh, residents, um, I think that we'll be in good positions to, uh, um, you know, to succeed in elections. But I think, you know, we can't take it for granted. I think that's the bottom line. I think that um, we have to show that we can lead. And um, uh, I think, you know, we have our work cut out for us this summer. So um, one of the good things on, on our side is that we have some significant candidates that work real hard. Uh, Lisa Madigan, uh, Pat Quinn. Um, Dan Hines, uh, Alexi Giannoulis. We've got some real quality candidates. Congresswoman Schakowsky, uh, our friend Julie Hamos may be running for statewide office. So um, I think that the, uh, the people of our state are going to have some good people to pick from. Uh, you're listening to Live from the Heartland. I'm Michael James. I'm talking to my friend and my state representative, Harry Osterman. Um, I have an announcement I'd like to make, and I'm going to use that as a way to ask a, another question, Harry. Uh, a neighbor... Uh, came to me with this little uh, flyer yesterday and asked me to uh, s spread the word about what's going on. It says, meters on Park District land to be privatized. Lakefront meters affect you. Higher fees, 24 hours, no over free overnight parking, more cars on your street 24-7. Remember winter? How about beach parking? Where will you and your visitors park? Negative impact on local businesses. There is going to be a public hearing um, at the Park District Headquarters at 541 North Fairbanks Court, 8th floor, on Wednesday, June 10th at 4 p.m. And uh, there's a, a lot of encouragement for people, a lot of grumbling in this town about the parking situation, the privatization, not only of parking meters, but uh, the attempts at Midway Airport, the Skyway, etc. cetera. Uh, the 49th Ward, uh, Alderman Moore's office is running a bus. You can call... Ann Sullivan at 338-5796. That would be 773-338-5796. And they're going to all meet at the field house at Loyola Park, uh, Sheridan and Greenleaf at 245. For those of you who want to take the CTA, um, uh, neighbors are encouraging you to meet here at the corner of Glenwood and Lunt in front of the Heartland Cafe by 235 on Wednesday afternoon for a, a big ride downtown on our beloved CTA. And... Um, with all that said, uh, I know there's a lot of concern about this. I'm not advocating anything other than you should show your support or your disapproval of this situation by making your voice heard and maybe making your body present. Um, so with that all said, Harry, I'd like to ask you on, uh, even though you're in, in state office, you certainly are aware of what's going on in the city. Uh, what's your take on the efforts to privatize uh, various uh, aspects of the public sector, uh, not only in the past, the present, and the future? And uh, since you have uh, park district uh, land in your district, what's your take on the privatization of parking? There's a beach named after my mom. Um, I, I think that we in government have to be very careful of how we privatize public assets. And... Uh, 
I was talking to someone last night about how, whether it was Warren Buffett or someone said that in the past, the United States had... I thought you were going to say you were talking to Warren. I wasn't talking to Warren <laughs> Buffett, but um, in the past, the United States has always had um, interest in other states, other you know countries, and how um, now a lot of countries are beginning to buy up assets here. And we don't want to look up in 20 years, or my kids look up in 20 years, and you know, have everything owned by somebody else. So I think we, I think the most important thing is that there needs to be a public dialogue. The fact that Park District's having this hearing, I think, is important. I think that, uh, you know, um, there wasn't a lot of uh, public dialogue about the parking meter deal, uh, which I think has a lot of people Underscore. upset. Underscore. And I think that, um, so I think the Park District is going to listen to a lot of people. Uh, all of us saw what the marinas near Devon when they tried to put them in there. A lot of people in our community got up in arms about it, and uh, that proposal died. So um, I think people should come out to this, and I think they should make their voices heard. And hopefully there's something that can get worked out. It's not a done deal. Uh, once again, uh, 541 North Fairbanks Court, 8th floor, 4 p.m., June 10th. If you're riding the L, meet in front of the Heartland. If you're riding a bus, you can go to the field house. Uh, at Loyola Park. Uh, you want more information, call Ann Sullivan at the Alderman's office, 773-338-5796. Harry, uh, I like talking to you, so let's do a little more talking. Okay. We're uh, on WLUW887, Loyola University's community radio station. Uh, I would like it if you would just share a little bit uh, with our listening audience, and many of them, since we don't go too far beyond our borders here, uh, are your constituents. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you came from, what you uh, learned growing up. Talk about your mom, your dad, whatever you'd like. Just you got a new a family, you got new kids. Uh, you and I, uh, we used to kind of. Uh, joke around a lot, a little bit uh, in kind of opposition, because I didn't support you your first time out, because I knew the other guy, I didn't know you. I've come to be very fond of you. Uh, we've had some good times together. Share a little bit about yourself with our listeners. I, I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, one of the things that I like to do, there were, there were people that were uh, suspect of me, is a kind way to put it, when I ran, <laughs> And That's well I like put. to think that I have proved a lot of them wrong. And um, you know what? My mother was an alderman in the in the 48th Ward. And before she was an alderman, more importantly, she was a community activist. So uh, I was someone who grew up with um, my mother having community meetings about trying to get a park built or trying to clean up the lakefront all in our living room. So my, my growing up was, um, you know, listening to people talk about how to make our community better. So that was instilled in me at a very young age, and um, I took that and uh, you, know, you know worked in government. I was uh, uh, also the head of the uh, Edgewater Community Council, which is a large community organization in Edgewater, and um, I took a lot of those values to Springfield. I, I felt when I ran the first time, uh, you know, when, when Katie Hogan was working against me at an L stop, uh, which I kid <laughs> her about frequently. That's um, our co-host. <laughs> that. Um, Oftentimes, people don't think about Springfield. Uh, they don't think about Springfield and how it affects Rogers Park. And uh, so, I wanted to make sure in Edgewater, when I when I went down there, that I helped to bring resources back and, and advocate on behalf of our community. I helped bring um, the ceasefire program to uh, our community. Uh, worked on after-school programs in our community. So. Um, you know, when we talk about our budget problems right now, I understand the, the real effects that it's going to have on people. And, uh, you know, I'm grounded here. I, I grew up on the lakefront and um, been real involved in Lake Michigan issues. Uh, I have three beautiful kids um, that are right now at home. We're having a garage sale, so my wife's going to kill me because uh, I'm a little bit late. But um, I'm going to keep them about three more minutes, dear. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's uh, it's been... It's an honor to represent the people of our community. I think that I see how much people are involved and how, how active they are. So when I go down to Springfield, um, I know how I got there and why I'm down there, and I'm not lost. I'm grounded in that, and I know the people are counting on me. So um, a lot of people, they drive to Springfield, they kind of lose their way, and uh, I know that there's people that are watching what I do. So it's it's been an unbelievable experience, a learning experience for me, and I think I've made some, some positive strides on a lot of issues.